Ladies and gentlemen, today is March 10th, 2015, and this is the Can Kale Show, episode 212. I'm your host, Ken Lafferty, and this is a show where we learn to be better artists, and it is, in fact, Tutorial Tuesday. And what we're going to be going into today is mixing light and color, which is something that can be seen a lot, uh, something that I touched on in the recently released Ari Fan Art Splash, or Fart Splash, as some of you like to call it. Um, during the time lapse and just during that whole series, I touched on something that I didn't really get a chance to explain because, like I said, a, a lot of times it's something that could be devoted to an entire daily itself. And that is mixing colors, like mixing colors and light, but specifically colored light. For instance, like this blue ball with the red dress. And how do I know how to transition these shadows and what colors to pick? And that's what we're going to be going into today with the help of Emma Sun. But before we actually get into that, it's going to be a little bit more of a joint study session, just so you know. A little more of a joint study session. Before we get into that, we have some things we got to look at, and that is your guys' awesome work. Awesome work on the lovely lane, aka the Facebook. Thank you guys so much for joining up and liking the page. Not only liking the page, but submitting your art to the Kane Kale Facebook. And if you'd like to take a look at all this stuff for yourself, just uh, type in that little tiny URL. Or if you're watching this on YouTube, the link is down in the description. All right, ladies and gentlemen, with all that out of the way, let's go ahead and get into what we're going to talk about. So before we jump into Emma, let me go ahead and just kind of, let me explain something. Let me, let me explain something. Okay. So, um, I, I think the best place to explain this is actually going to be in the dress because we have two opposing colors. And the thing that I want you guys to remember today that we're going to be talking about mostly is the principle of two colors coming together, which I'm sure you've learned way long ago, like back in first grade, you learned that blue and yellow make green together, right? Or blue and red make purple. And we're gonna be calling upon that and then introducing some slight little adjustments to it that we can keep in our mind when we're trying to figure out what colors to use, okay? So first let's zoom in on this, let's zoom in on this and let's take a look at what colors we're exactly working with here. And I'll tell you a little bit about why I chose those colors. As soon as my Photoshop stops lagging, there we go. All right, so, and I'm gonna pull out our handy dandy color picker here. So we're gonna learn about a couple different things today. One is local color, which is something I have taught you many times about. And that is going to be another fancy way of saying the real color. What is the color of this under a white light? And that is of course red in this case. Then as you go into your shadows, you'll notice that, and I want you to pay attention to this little slider right here too, because you'll notice that there are going to be things called hue shifts happening. And hue shifts happen, first of all, because I, I just like to have them happen in my pieces, and, but there is a reason for it. And that is because of ambient color, ambient color. So basically all of your blues, or rather in this case, are ambient. See what's happening around this character? A lot of the ambient colors are kind of like this bluish green, kind of like cool colors. So naturally, as your reds progress towards, okay, okay, so watch this little slider here. See, as your reds progress towards the shadows, see how we move more towards the purples here? And that is happening because of your ambience. But then we start going into another realm. We cross through another portal and we start going even further into blues, right? See, look at this little thing right here. Oh, look at that. You can actually do this now? <gasps> oh, they must have just added that in Photoshop CC. Oh my gosh, I cannot believe that. That is so cool. You can literally just like drag and look at how the colors change as you go forward. That is awesome. I, I, I didn't know you could do that. Okay, so I'm just like, I'm freaking out because of that because that makes it a lot easier to explain. So see, you can see right here, see how it goes from red and then it kicks down. It's almost like a seismograph, right? Is that what it's called? Uh, the thing that measures earthquakes, what's that, what's that called? <laughs> Seismometer? But anyway, okay, so you can see how we are moving towards blue, okay? But also, okay, so we're moving towards blues and purples, but the other thing that happens is you'll notice that our red up here is much lighter than the purple down here. And that is the second part that I want you guys to learn about. Whatever color and light you are going to be mixing together, uh, most of the time they are going to also darken. And I'm gonna explain this principle right now in the best way that I possibly can. All right, so let's go ahead and pull up a red 
color, okay? So we've got red color. Don't worry so much about Emma. We'll get to her in just a second. We'll talk about Emma in just a second. Well, that's what our wrap-up will be. Seismograph, yes, I was right. Okay, thank you for clearing that up. <laughs> the an Anriandean. Anriandean uh, seismograph. Okay, so we've got our red color. Remember, like I said, and now we'll say, okay, well, what color does this red turn when we introduce a blue light to it? Okay. Now, the best thing that I would ask you to do is like pick the color of your light. Okay. So say in this case, it's going to be blue. Okay. Now get yourself a nice soft brush, nice soft brush. And I want you to just lightly dab it on there. Okay. Don't push too hard because then you'll get that right. You want to lightly dab it on there. And then you'll notice that your colors automatically start to mix. Isn't that interesting? Okay. So now let's take a look at this, right? Same thing is happening. See how we move towards the blue, but there is something that we are forgetting here. And that is that we need to darken. We need to darken during our transition. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull this down and slightly to the right to darken it and saturate it slightly. Um, technically, I don't even know if you would saturate it, but I just like to do it just very, very simply. Instead of going straight down, just go down and a little bit to the right. Adds a little bit more vibrancy, a little bit more uh, liveliness to your colors. And then actually what you're going to be seeing when a blue light interacts with this red color um, is it's actually going to turn it this color. And the reason why this happens, the reason why this happens, oh crap, I should have done another layer, dang it. The reason why, oh, I'll do another ex example anyway, because <laughs> I didn't want it to have those hard edges. Okay, now the reason why this happens, we're gonna get into some science, right? We're gonna get into some science. The reason why this happens is because I'm sure many of you learned in art school, maybe, well, maybe some of you, but when you have a blue light, right, or whatever light is interacting with your color, right? The reason why we see light and we see color is because light is bouncing off of whatever material it is coming in contact with, okay? But in this case, um, the the color that it's interacting with, you wanna think of it like, you wanna think of it like this. How much blue is present in red, right? There's not any, right? So what we're actually going to be reflected is little bits of blue light and also the local color, which is red. And the reason why less is being reflected back at you is the reason why it gets darker. I really hope that made sense. I really, really hope that made sense. So let's let's go through it slowly. Go through it very slowly. One more time. And we'll do it with a different color this time. Let's do um, let's do something else. Let's do blue and yellow. Sure, why not? Blue and yellow. And this is gonna change for all kinds of different materials, but in general. Like I want to teach you guys this. And we'll go into a little bit of complexity here in just a second. So let's do blue and yellow, which we know is gonna turn green, right? But now with our newly found knowledge, with our newly found knowledge, here's what's gonna happen. Watch this. Okay, so we got yellow light, yellow light. And what I'm doing here is I've actually got it set to a, a clipping mask here. But let's go ahead and put our yellow on. Lightly dab it on, okay? There's our mix right there. See what it's doing? It's turning us more towards green. Check out the seismograph. Boom, moving towards green. But now with our newly found knowledge, we need to bring it down a notch and over. And as much as you, I find it, I, don't, I haven't really figured out exactly what the theory is with how dark you're supposed to make it. But in general, you wanna make it fairly dark. And then this is going to be our new color, right? This is what a blue object would look like underneath a yellow light. All right, now let's get into the complexity. Okay, okay, the complexity. Again, remember, yellow light hits that blue ball in this case, and it reflects less of that yellow light back at us and mixes with what's there. So we get a darker green. Now, the next thing is, is that as, depending on the actual material, you can get all kinds of different um, you can get all kinds of different uh, effects, okay? So say this is a very matte color. Um, as you've learned in school, I'm sure you've done like the little ball rendering thing, right? Where you do like the little shine there, right? Well, depending on the glossiness of your, um, of your object, you're actually going to get a little bit more of this happening here. So it might, it's gonna go closer towards 
that um, towards whatever light is reflecting on it. And now this has to do with material. This more has to do with material. So if you have something matte, it'll look like that. If you have something glossy, you'll, you might actually get all the way to what your original light was. Okay, so for example, like this, like a D, so you'll have something like that, okay? Yeah, I like it. Same thing with this one up here. Let me do that here. So again, matte color, you're gonna have a very subtle transition, a very <laughs> subtle transition towards here, right? If it's glossy, you're gonna pull it in right towards what that actual color is, right? And it'll have something more like that. All right, ladies and gentlemen, and basically that's how you render out your glossiness of materials. Okay, so let's take all this knowledge that we've learned and let's put it into use by lighting our favorite character, Emma Sun, with different lights, different lights. Oh, and I'll show you an easy way to do this too, because you're like, yeah, Keenan, like the science is all great and everything, but is there like, like one step that I could do to simplify this all down to like one thing? so I can get a general idea of what I'm going for. And my answer to you is yes, of course, because we have the power of Photoshop and we have the power of the lines being in the right group layer. <laughs> and I'm gonna show you how to do that. Okay, so um, as you know, the way that I like to color my characters is obviously with character masks, okay? So this is basically the mask that creates the character and then I just lay everything on top of it. So basically what I've done here is I've just taken this back mask and I, actually you could, you don't even have to do it that way. You could actually literally just do it like this. Okay, so everything is clipped to this back mask and this allows us to not go out of the lines. If I unclip everything, you can see how everything's out of the lines, right? But because I'm smart and I know how to use Photoshop, I just clip it. Oh, and just as a refresher, the way that you clip um, layers back to that original mask is you just hold Alt and you get that little magical icon and you click between it and then it'll just clip everything right back to that. You wanna think of it as a stencil. All right, now that I've gotten that out of the way for the 200th time, let's go ahead and talk about lighting. Okay, easy way to do lighting is create a new layer over top of everything, right? And because it's on top of everything, we again need to clip it back. Whoops, clip it back and choose your light. Choose your character, choose your light, okay? And now what I want you to do is a couple different things. And this is more so where it becomes more of a joint study session, you could say, because there's a couple different things that I think really uh, help with this. Now, one is to take your light color and I want you to set it to a multiply. And what this is naturally going to do is it's going to darken and um, kind of mute your colors down, okay? So it's gonna mute your colors. So this is a really good way to just get started. And again, remember I'm not pressing very hard. Uh, like, cause if you press super hard, then it'll kind of just make everything gray, which is technically okay, I guess, if like everything is lit by that color. But um, I like to press like fairly lightly, okay? And again, this is up to you. Or you could just press really hard and then just work with the opacity. That's another thing too. So I found that Multiply does a pretty good job of giving this uh, feeling. Uh, soft Light also kind of does it. Hard Light, whoa. Hard light works good if you kind of drop it down. Maybe something like that. Or no, that's vivid light. Hard light. Hard light gives us something more like more like this. So this is kind of a cool exercise to start unifying colors, but I've found that multiply usually will be your better friend uh, when it comes to what we talked about because it just will naturally darken everything, okay? So now that we've gotten that out of the way, Let's talk about, again, we wanna talk about glossiness, glossiness. So for instance, our hair will be much more glossy than our face, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take that color and we're gonna just uh, create a new layer over top. And let's go ahead and just kind of start adding in glossiness to uh, what we're working with here, okay? And because I'm awesome, because I'm awesome, we're gonna have to do it this way. <laughs> There's probably an easier way to do this, but whatever. Okay, so we're adding in some glossiness to this hair, okay? Now very, very subtly, we're gonna work with that. Actually, you know what? I think we're gonna do this. We're gonna do this the other way, okay? So this is the way to get your general idea, but we're gonna do this the right way, okay? This is the right way. We're gonna work with one layer at a time, and we're gonna do this the right way. Okay. 
So we have blue light. Okay, let's start with the skin. Ja skin. So lightly press lightly press on there. <laughs> Why is this not working? Did I set it to something weird? Why is that painting white? What the heck? Oh, it's because I had eraser selected. Okay, okay, here we go. Okay, so lightly press. Choose that color. <gasps> Magical. Bring it down and to the right even more because in the skin, remember we have that subsurface scattering. So let's go ahead and color the skin this color. Oh, <gasps> look at that. Oh, brilliant. Brilliant. Okay, hair. In fact, let's just move the color to our other, move the light color to our other color picker there. Let's go ahead and mix the blue in there. Oh, we're getting sort of a gray. Interesting. Darken, move it over a little bit. And we're going to be left with this color. Interesting, no? This is actually really cool because I always wanted to know how, because I would look at these pictures, or I would look at these um, drawings and paintings that people would do, and they always had the characters lit with like a colored light, and I was like, how did they know which color to pick? That way it looks right. Like it actually looks like that's the color that's being interacted with. All right, let's, uh, whoops. Okay, let's take these. Maroon, same thing. Oh gosh, dang it. There we go. All right, maroon. Lightly place it on there. Is that even the right layer? What layer is this on? Oh, it's right there. Okay, lightly place it. Darken and move it over. New color, perfect. And then blue, which is interesting, blue light onto a blue object is actually not going to change very much. It's not going to change. So uh, yeah, we'll just leave that one as it is. All right, so now we can talk about glossiness. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Let's move into that. And then I'm gonna take your guys' questions and we're gonna end today's show. End today's show. Okay, so we got blue glossiness happening on the hair over here. Okay, this is gonna be much more glossy than say the face is going to be. So we'll have something like this. Yeah, okay. Skin, we're gonna have a very, very um, subtle change. Subtle changes here happening in the skin because the skin is very matte. So I'm gonna mix a little bit of that in. I'm go ahead and do some of that, okay. And then also what's really cool to do is you can take this shadow color here and if say our light is coming from, I'm playing it with it like the light is coming from the top right, okay? Or the, right the top left, her top right. So light is coming from this way, okay? This is what we're experimenting with. All right, so because the light is coming from there, we can have cast shadows, cast shadows, which will basically look like this. basically taking away a little bit more of that light going on there, okay? I'm gonna put a little bit more of that blue, a little more of that blue into the side of this hair. So I'll have something more like that. Yeah, yeah, I like it. All right, get some more of that blue. Oh, that's nice, I just put the, put the freaking color of the light right up there, that, that made it super easy. And, uh, oh, also consider this. This is another important thing. Anything that is white, for instance, her eyes are going to be change the color of that light because you wanna think about blue light on a white object is going to reflect all light. White reflects all light. So in this case, it's gonna turn her eyes blue. It'll turn her eyes the color of the light. Color of the wind. And then we'll have a little bit of this cast shadow in there which will technically be like nothing. Basically, if this if blue light was the only thing here, then we'd be seeing nothing. So it'll just darken, kind of like that. I don't know, there, there we go, that looks good. Do something like that. There we go. All right, wow, look at that. Look at that. 
And that is going to wrap up our idea of how to pick and choose colors for right now. But you know what time it is. It's time for me to take your guys' questions, so please load them up on the catapults and cast them over the walls, as can, as can be seen in this video with the question catapults. You guys have the funniest comments over here. Aliano. Firmly grasp it. M. Wait. <laughs> uh, okay, so questions coming in. Any questions you guys have? Um, someone is asking, uh, Too Refined is asking about how I painted the fur on Ari's tails. Yes, I can go into that. I can go into that. This has been quite a fun thing. Okay, so many of you know that I like to work with, I like to work with basically just this brush here, the chalk brush. And the reason why I like it so much, the reason why I like it so much is because it has this natural, cool texture to it, okay? But in this case, I decided to try my hand at a different brush, and that was the hair brush. I don't know if I actually put this one on my custom brushes on DeviantArt. I think I did, I'm pretty sure I did. But it's basically this brush. And there's probably other hair, I mean, you can just go on DeviantArt and download any type of hairbrush. But I started with this. I started with basically the hairbrush. Um, and basically the way that I build up the tails is I'll start with a shape sort of like this. All right, I'll start with a shape. But then more importantly, I'm considering the, the actual shape of the tails and like the design of the fur. And it's sort of like this overlapping, like almost like a scale mail. I, I think of it as like a scale mail type thing because that's the patterns that I paint when I do scale mail. And it's basically overlapping like that. And that's basically how I go about painting tails right there. There you go. And then I did end up going in because you don't want to just use only the hairbrush like by itself because then it kind of looks like a brush. You can kind of like pick it out. And it doesn't look as good as though you would, you know, you just actually went in and started painting it again. What the heck is going on with that? What? Oh, the brightness. <gasps> ah, there we go. Okay, but yeah, I'll actually go back in and I'll kind of sculpt things out. Go back in, sculpt things out, and kind of clean up my edges. I'll clean up edges, especially on the edges of the tails, because again, the edges of these like the hairbrush, it doesn't, it doesn't look good. So you want to go back in there and you want to carve it out. Still retain a little bit of that, a little bit of that texture going on in there, but overall refine your edges. So that's the way I go about doing that business right there. And then I was like really lazy cause I knew I was going to blur it anyway. Like I just, I knew I was going to blur the tails. So I didn't put too much work into them. Probably the one that has the most detail is like right in here and, and back there. But yeah, it's more so shapes, more so shapes than like texture. I always like to think of it that way. If I can condense things into shapes, I always opt for that. All right. Um, Matthew SSGC is asking, what happens if you have two different light sources? That is a great question for another time because <laughs> that can get really, really tough. I think it just, it's going to go in order of... Obviously, like um, it's gonna go in order of intensity. So, say we had a blue light over here, and then a yellow light coming from the other side. Again, I would probably just I, I, like I don't even know what I would do. <laughs> it just goes by which one's more intense. Because usually, what I'll end up doing is you'll have like an ambient light, and then you'll have sort of like a rim light. And if that's the case, then you can kind of do one of these things, where you can just uh, light the edge of your character like that it'll just being uh or it'll just get picked up on the side of the character like that okay but that is a whole nother thing for another time it's gonna drive my brain crazy if i try to think of two light sources so um but yeah usually i like to think in terms of most of the time there will be multiple light sources like for instance see same thing here it's like we've got the ambient or we've got like a spot light happening with this blue going on her face and on the chest and you know basically down the side of her body. But then we also have the backlight. 
the backlight. But luckily for us, we don't have to worry so much about seeing what the backlight is doing other than the rim light on the tails and around the, you know, the sides of her figure there. And then there is an ambient light. I always like to put an ambient white light in my pictures because that allows us to pull in our local colors. You guys remember what that means? The local colors, where the color lives. That's where I like to think about, the local color. So you can see basically in this piece, we've got local color from the front, which allows us to see the basically the real colors. And then we've got side light, ambient light coming from there. And then we've got the backlight. So it really just has to do with that. Mostly what I wanted to go in today was how you go about mixing colors. Mixing colors, getting a good baseline for where you wanna start with which colors you're gonna choose. All right, last question. Last question. Coming in from Kilo Byton. Asking, I saw your Maokai video and I'm currently learning how to do particle effects. I really like the way your particle effects came out. Looking for advice on how to start particles. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, this is something that I went into, I think a little bit on the Ari Splash, but uh, I'll show you a quick little tutorial right here. A quick little tutorial here, a bonus. A bonus because I love you guys. And I'm gonna show you guys how to make cool particles. Okay, so the number one thing that you wanna do and this is really good because if you're gonna be working with a light background, it's hard to paint a bright, like say you're gonna be doing like an arcane particle. It's like, yeah, all right, let's do it. Here, I'm just gonna like get out there and do it. I'll drop that there. Okay, so say you're working with like a white canvas. You're like, yeah, I'm gonna make a really bright particle. All right, yeah, okay. Um, yeah, it's not really that cool looking. And the reason why that is, is because you need to make sure that your background, you gotta make sure you have some contrast on that baby. So the first thing that I always like to do with my particles is I think of them in terms of layers. Layers, okay? So you wanna have a dark color first, okay? Now immediately, whoa, we can see what's happening. We can see what is in fact happening. Uh, let's see here. We can see what's happening because we have a dark backdrop, first of all, okay? Let's go ahead and kind of tone that down a little bit. But then another cool thing to add power to your, to your particle, you wanna make sure that you're thinking about hue shifts too. Again, look at this. See that blue? Look at how we move from there to there. We go from, and this just has to do with color temperature, which is another thing that I don't know if I went in, I think I did go into color temperature on one thing, but uh, basically you wanna make your particles look really hot. So for blue, you're naturally gonna start moving towards your greens and teals and more towards white. Okay, so at the most powerful point of this particle, and again, remember working in, working in layers, okay? So I'm gonna put some extra hotness on the front here, and then it's gonna kinda cool off as we go back here. Okay, so again, let's go ahead and cool this off as it goes, as the trail goes towards the end. Okay, so you get something like that. Okay, and then what I like to do is I like to do a hard light layer. Now this is something that you can get addicted to, so I want you to be very careful with how you use it. Use it with precision, use it sparingly, okay? Hard light, what it does is it, it's basically my trick for making things glow because it automatically puts in those cool kind of, um, just creates a nice cool transition for whatever you're working with. And then again, we're gonna go on top, new layer. And then I like to create things like little like bits of noise or whatever, like little, I don't know, just like little details, right? Like say it's like an electric attack. So you're gonna have like little arcing electricity, things like this. And that's a very quick way to create a particle. I know it's kind of rudimentary, but you know what I mean? It's just there for, it's there for an example, right? <laughs> That's something I can do in just a few minutes. All right, so I hope that helps you out. Just think of in terms of hue shifting, work in layers, make sure you have a dark backdrop, right? Make sure you have a dark backdrop if you're creating um, sort of spell and magic effects. Uh, and that will help you out. Alrighty, people, so we're gonna end today's show. Thank you for joining me live on Twitch. As usual, people on YouTube, thumbs up if you like it, thumbs down if you don't. My name is Ken Lafferty. I'll see you guys on Thursday. We're gonna be starting up the Thoughtful Thursdays again, just for you guys, just for you guys. 
and um, and and I really want to do it too because as you can tell, I've been stuttering a little bit. I've been lacking a little bit on my public speaking skills. I need to get back into that. So we're going to be doing that on Thursday. You guys take care of yourselves. Till next time, stay sharp. See you next time.